Hello makers! So, for the past few days, I've been printing a lot of TPU. And when I say I've printed a lot of TPU, I've used up every single sample I've had from spanner hands. Now as for what I have been printing in TPU, well, uh, coasters. Just... coasters. Now while this looks nothing special except for the dual color, that's kind of cool. Um, this. This looks much better. Wanna know how I did this shiny TPU thing? Well, stick around. So a bit of a backstory. Uh, about a week ago, I saw a post on Facebook, on the Prusa Facebook page, and a guy called Ryan Hill posted a photo of a before and after TPU print. Well, when it was printed normally, and after he stuck it in an oven for a few minutes. Now this print looked absolutely awesome. It caught my attention straight away and obviously I wanted to try it. So the first thing I did was I went onto Fusion 360 and I designed, well, this design right here, which is basically just an extruded circle with my SVG logo on it and another circle. The logo and the circle are extruded like a one millimeter further up from the base. So all I have to do is just change filament at a certain layer height to get the dual color effect. Next up was to dry the TPU, very important, as I mentioned in my last video. So now I have a food dehydrator, which I use to dry all the filaments that I need to use. And I started printing. Now, so far, so good. Printing went well. Um, I'm gonna get rid of these because this wasn't the first example. The first print. The first print was this, and this is in Spannerhand's Natural TPU and Sky Blue TPU. Now while this, well, kind of turned out okay. Um, I, there are a few things that happened here which started teaching me a few things. First off, I set the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. I let it warm up. I grabbed a Pyrex plate that I have. I threw in some Magigoo on it and I kind of stuck it on it and just threw it in the oven. The reason why I put Magigoo is because I didn't want it to stick to the plate. So after about, I think it was about three minutes, um, well, this is what came out. Now, while this came out like really glossy, um, a few things had kind of gave me an indication of what I needed to fix. The first thing is that this does not have enough infill. And what happens is that when the TPU starts, well, reaching its glass transition point and melting, it starts caving into the, um, well, the void between the infill. So I knew I had to increase the layer, uh, the infill percentage. Secondly, I kind of left it a bit too long. And what happened is that the blue TPU started kind of seeping in into the white, um, kind of melting and mixing together. So I knew I left it for too long. In comes the second test. Now, the second test had much more infill on the base and 100% infill at the top. Ah yes, before anyone else asks me, I print TPU at 20 millimeters a second, 230 degrees on the hot end, 50 degrees on the heat bed, and I use either Magico or a printer stick um, on the build surface in order to make it easier to peel off. Where was I? So yeah, I printed me a second one and this had much more infill and 100% infill on the, well, the embossed parts and the circle. This turned out a bit better, um, still not enough infill, and that kind of told me that now I have to go with 100% infill because the logo actually turned out really well. Apart from that, I had some stuff, some gunk on the nozzle, I forgot to clean it, so it kind of stuck there, but yeah, onwards and upwards. So next, I printed this. Now, and now the difference between the two is the thickness. Now, while this has two millimeter base height and one millimeter on the embossed part, this has 1.6 millimeter at the bottom and 0.6 millimeter at the top, meaning it's, well, thinner, which means it should warm up quicker. So once again, I set the oven, I threw it in there, and this is the result. Now, this almost came perfect. The only problem that I had is that the top layers, the, the embossed layers of the logo and the circle, kind of melted before the rest, and I didn't want to leave it too long because um, I was scared that the colors would start bleeding into each other. Now, while this still turned out great, it didn't have that full effect of glossy finish all over the place. I tried another one, um, but still had the same effect. I tried to leave it a bit longer, but I just, I didn't want to risk it. I didn't want to ruin the print. Um, but it's, I'm still happy with this, don't get me wrong, but I can do better. So then I got to thinking, 
What if all the colors were in the same layer height? Ideally, you would do this with a multi-material or a multi-color printer, but I wanted to do this in a way that everyone could do it. So what I did was I did the same configuration Fusion 360, the exception being that I kind of extruded the logo independently in each color. So then what I have to do is simply offset them print them separately and then just fit them into each other, which would look something like this. But that wasn't my first attempt, so not yet. So while everything fit together, uh, there was a bit of slack on my offset. I used 0.20 millimeter offset for the parts to have enough, you know, tolerances to fit in. Turns out it was slightly too much, so I threw it in the oven. Same procedure, Pyrex plate, magic goo, put everything on it and throw it in the oven at 200 degrees. And this is where I started noticing a few things that I did wrong. First, um, I found out that Bioflex and TPU have very different glass transition points. For those who don't know, Bioflex is like a flexible PLA. So it, it, it kind of starts melting at a lower temperature than TPU. What I did in this case was the red parts, well, those were in Bioflex uh, because I misplaced my TPU and I put them in the wrong bags, the sample bags, so yeah. Um, and instantly I saw that the Bioflex was melting away um, without giving chance for the TPU to start sort of reaching its glass transition point. But um, I still decided to leave it in the oven and see what happens. After about five minutes, um, this happened. So this is my coaster. And now my coaster is a permanent part of this Pyrex plate. See, while Magic Goo works really good for temperatures up to 100 degrees, um, this ends up being about 200 degrees. And yeah, Magic Goo, I think, just vanishes into thin air. This thing started melting, it's stuck on the plate and now it become a permanent fixture. But on, on the upside, um, there's less chance of my daughter breaking this plate if she slams it on the table. So having failed yet again, I wanted to do something different. And this time, I didn't want to use an oven. I wanted to use a heat gun. And that's where these two come in. So this is the normal version. This is the plain version that you would print out of a TPU as you normally would. A slight bit of stringing, so you will need to spend a couple of minutes or possibly not, just to remove the strings and make it as clean as possible. Then I grabbed my heat gun, I set it to, I think it was about 400 degrees. And the first thing I did was kind of just hovering over the whole area, circulating constantly, because I wanted the whole piece to warm up sort of at the same time rather than just some parts. Once I saw that the TPU kind of started glistening, meaning it's about to reach its glass transition point, I started focusing on different areas. So spending like a few seconds at a time in each area and after I think about three minutes of heating it up kind of evenly and not, well this is the result and the result is that every single piece of it is now glossy and it's, it looks absolutely awesome. Now the fact that this happened, that now everything's melted and bonded together, this thing is actually much stronger. It's still as flexible as TPU should be, but it is much more flexible. Think of it as annealing. And these do really good coasters because, well, TPU has a relatively high glass transition point, meaning that it should have no problem withstanding a hot cup of coffee on top of it. Now by this time I was running really low on samples of TPU, so I started making the coasters thinner and thinner, and this was the first try. Now, while it actually turned out not too bad at all, the tolerances I had, they were still 0.2 at this point, uh, were still too wide, so as I was heating it up, it was kind of shrinking independently, so it was leaving gaps. However, the part actually still stuck together. First I heated the base and then I started heating the top. And even if I flex it, it's still stuck together. So this still works as a coaster. It's still slightly shiny. Not as shiny as I would like it to be, but still quite shiny. Then I tried to print another one, but by this point I was almost out of sample. So this was just a quick test print um, doing 0.1 millimeter tolerances on the edges. Um, that worked perfectly fine, but yeah, it was heating up too quickly because it was too thin. So now I know what to do next time. But once again, everything's still attached. So if, if you want to see how I did this, because this could actually be an awesome thing. If you want to see how I did this, let me know and I'll do a video about it. And that is basically it. That's how I got my 
shiny TPU coasters and I have a couple of plans now. I want to try getting models with TPU and kind of blow drying them, see if they can, you know, become a bit shiny. I think it would be awesome and a nice experiment to try out. That is it for today. So, first of all, I want to thank Ryan Hill for sharing his, well, I think, discovery um, with the TPU. I, I think it's an awesome thing and I think it should, I should definitely catch on. Uh, it definitely created a, a more fun factor with TPU and kind of opens up a few possibilities which I'm really excited about. If you are interested in any of the colors which I use today, those are all spanner hands, TPUs and bioflexes. You can find them in the video description below. Spanner hands, awesome guy, Richard, he's the channel sponsor, so please make sure you check him out. Same as Magic Goo, links in the video description. That is it for today, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.